and it's a, a continuation of the lecture that uh, Abu Osama began, which is judging in Islam. الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجال كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدى هدى نبينا صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Before we begin I would like to share with you brothers an incident that took place today after the khutbah al-jum'ah there was an Arab brother who came to me and he said to me, Ahi, during the khutbah you made a statement that I knew you didn't mean what you said, but you should rectify the situation because people may misunderstand what your intent was. Before saying anything, he gave me a bottle of oil, he touched my beard, he told me he loved me for Allah's sake. He made dua for my mother and father or kuffar. Made dua for my daughter Ramla. And made dua for my efforts. And he asked Allah to forgive his sins and my sins. And then he began with his nasiha. If he would have told me my breath stinks, my feet stink, wallahi I would have been happy because of the way he came to me. He said in the khutbah you said, that the companion was Majnoon, the one who was angry. And the Prophet told him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if he said, A'udhu Billahi min shaitan al rajim his anger would subside. The brother said, you said, when that companion said, Hal taruni Majnoonan? He said, you said, Naam, into Majnoon. يَأْمُرُكَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِأَمْرٍ فَلَا تَمْتَثِرُ بِهِ He said, I know what you meant. You're majnoon, you're crazy. Rasulullah will order you to do something and you don't do it. He said, I don't think you meant that companion. Well, there are those people who it is their way of lying in wait. They lie mutarabbisun to misconstrue people's statements and to carry the statements of people on the worst possible meaning. He says, so please, for your own good, and for the good of those people who are unsuspecting, like the new Muslims, please rectify this issue. So we say first of all to that brother, Barakallahu fika, wa ahsanallahu ilayka, wa akramakullah ikramin kathira. I was really impressed with that way. And after that, we would like to make it clear that that was not the intent of that statement. Hasha lillahi subhanahu wa ta'ala that any of us will say anything that is negative or anything that could be understood as being a disparaging statement against the best people of this ummah. Radiyallahu anhum ajma'in. Those people who, as we sit here right now at this moment, from amongst us, there's someone who is the atqa nas fina. Someone has the most taqwa here. And Allah is alim and hasib with that individual. And someone from amongst us is the adna wahid fina. He is the least one from amongst us. And Allah is alim with that haqiqah. Whatever the case is, there's no one who is sitting here except that we owe a great amount of gratitude and thanks to those companions for their efforts and their jihad. 
their tathiyya, the sacrifices that they made. Our mothers and fathers, there's no one here except that he feels grateful and thankful to them. Wallahi, the haq of the companions upon us are no less than that. Our Islam is because, by Allah's permission, the efforts of those companions. So loving them is a part of Iman and a part of Islam. And hating them is a part of Nifaq and a part of Kufr. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us in a hadith that is muttafaqun alayhi on the authority of that tremendous companion Al-Barad ibn Azib radiyallahu anhu when he talked about the Ansar and the Muhajireen لا يحبهم إلا مؤمن ولا يبغضهم إلا منافق ومن أحبهم أحبه الله ومن أبغضهم أبغضه الله No one loves those people except a mu'min and no one hates them except a munafiq Whoever loves them, Allah loves you and whoever hates them, Allah hates them So our aqidah as it relates to those companions is our sitting in the masjid and the presentations of these durus and muhadarat and the way that we understand and practice and carry on in the correct manner as it relates to the dictates of this kitab and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all of it without any stifna goes back to those companions radiyallahu anhum and we are insha'Allah as Allah mentioned concerning them those people who come after them وَالَّذِينَ جَاءُوا مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا اغْفِرْ لَنَا وَلِإِخْوَانِنَا الَّذِينَ سَبَقُونَا فِي الْإِيمَانِ وَلَا تَجْعَلْ فِي قُلُوبِنَا غِلَّ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا That's our aqidah as it relates to those companions. So I think that brother and hasha lillahi ta'ala for us to have relatives, companions, neighbors, the local store merchant, people who we have to deal with who hate the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. As it relates to the continuation ikhwana of what we began earlier today and the extension of it as well, I asked a few brothers after the khutbah al Juma, do you remember the four points that were mentioned? And almost 100% none of them remembered. And that's from the benefit of the khutbah being short because people's attention span is short and the recitation of the Quran should be long. But now it's a situation that has different. We need to learn how to come to the khutbah al Juma and how to focus and how to concentrate when we learn. When we hear something, there's a minhaj of understanding and comprehending. Some people come to the Juma and they leave and there's no benefit. But briefly, to redo what was said already, we may mention, Ikhwan, that if someone was put in the position where he had to be a qadi or a judge between the people, it is better for him not to take that responsibility because of all of those issues that we mentioned. That whoever is made to be a qadi bain al-nas, whoever is made to be a judge, he has been slaughtered with a knife. That the majority of the judges in this dunya are in the hellfire with the exception of those people who judge with the haq. Wa qalilu mahum. And in addition to that, we find from the companions, our examples, a strong delil why we should refrain from being judges. The Ashabu Badr, when they used to sit together and an issue was presented during the Khilafah of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, Al Imam ibn Qayyim rahimahullahu ta'ala, dealt extensively with the issue of the people who have done and who do the actions of the people of Lut. Salawatullahi wa salamu We don't like to call it liwat and we don't like to call it luti. 
How can we connect such a jarima to a prophet? That's like saying Abu Jahl is Muhammadi. Lut is Bari from what his people did. So we call them the people who do the actions of the people of Lut and not a Luti or Liwat. And Imam Ibn Qayyim, in dealing with how should they be punished, there are different ways they used to be punished in Al Islam. During the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, he gathered together the people of Badr. And he asked them, What do you people think we should do with them? Rasulullah he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Men wajatamuhu, Yamil Amala Kaumi Lut, Fakturu al Fa'ila wal Mafruda bihi. If you find a person who is doing this, then kill the one who is doing it and kill the one is being done to. It. But how was he killed? They would not put their heads up during the time of Rasulullah, so he never had to kill anyone. Abu Bakr asked the companions, what do you people think? The question would start with this man, it'll go to the next 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 man, all the way back around until he started again because they didn't want to be put in a position to have to answer those kinds of questions. We're getting ready to start establish a hud from the hudud of Allah. And we're going to look at this as a light issue. So this was their way, radiallahu anhu. It's fardu kifaya. I don't have to be responsible for it. In the majlis is fulan and fulan and fulan. Why do I have to be responsible for it? until it came to Ali radiallahu anhu and he gave his position and that's what happened to them and with them. So the point is, Ikhwan, we have from the companions examples of refraining from putting yourself in a position where the people are going to look at you and the people are going to come to you. I'm sure you are all aware that sometimes when we pass judgments and verdicts, we can cause people their lives. We can make the faruj halal. We can take the amwal from the people and put it in its improper place. As those companions were traveling on an expedition, and while they were on the expedition, there was one man who had an ihtilam and he needed a ghusl in the morning. But he has some sores in his head. He asked the people, you see my condition, I have sores in my head, it's cut, and it's cold. I think if I take a whistle, it's going to be a problem. The people gave a verdict and they said, as long as we have water, you have to make whistle. If there was no water, then you can make tayammum. But this thing you're trying to do, you have to make whistle. So the man made the whistle, and after that, the sand, the wind, infested his sores, and he subsequently died. When they told the Prophet about the incident, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he told those people, قَاتَلْتَمُوهُ قَاتَلَكُمُ اللَّهِ إِنَّمَا شِفَاءُ الْعِيِّ السُّؤَالِ Those people, you people have killed that man, may Allah kill you. Verily, the medicine for ignorance is to ask. If you don't know, don't talk without knowledge. So the man lost his life. And we have seen, unfortunately, these ahkam that have been passed and these judgments that have been passed that are similar to this. They have caused people their lives. People established the hudud in America against people who they have problems with. And this is being done by people who claim to be connected to the sunnah. So refrain, ikhwan, from being a person who wants to be in front of the people. This is my nasiha in general. We're living in a time where people have a job of their selves. Thalatha min al-munjiyat wa thalatha min al-muhlikat. There are three things that will save you and three things that will destroy you. From those three things that will destroy you is al-ijabu bin nafs for the person to think so much about himself. And how many people do not suffer from that disease. We think too much of ourselves. The second point was that in judging in Al-Islam, we have to get both sides of the story if that is possible. And during this day and time, 
is almost impossible not to get all sides of the story where the world has become a global village. The brother deserts his wife and he goes to the frontiers of Pakistan. We can zoom in on him and we can get him and say actually what happened. It's very difficult where we can't get all of the issues. This is part of ju judging and ruling in the religion of Al-Islam. Ya ayu al-nadheena amanu in ja'akum fasiqum bi naba'in fatabayyanu an tusibu qawmin bi jahalati fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadimeen. If there comes to you a fasiq with some news, then ascertain as to its validity. Check out that news. As for the tafsir that is commonly referred to in this ayat, that this ayat was revealed because of one of the companions going to some people he had a problem with in jahili and then becoming afraid and turning around and not going to them and then telling Rasulullah they were going to kill me and that's why I turned around and then Rasulullah prepared to make war and then this ayat was revealed. This ayat or this hadith has some da'af in it in the metan and in the isnad. The companions are udul, all of them. وَلَيْسَ فِيهِمْ فَاسِقٌ The companions, رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا So that's not authentic. But nonetheless, the point is clear. Someone brings you some news. You have to ascertain as to its validity. Get all of the story so that you don't unknowingly oppress people who are innocent. Again, Ikhwan, this principle is clear and it's easy and it's comprehensive. It's not difficult to understand. But yet we find some suddhij from the people today who they take this ayat and the principle of if a facet comes, you have to ascertain the news. So if a thiqa comes, you have to just take the news because the mafhum al-mukhalif will yaktadi hadha. You have to understand it. And then one of them says, thiqa. So you have to take what I say to you. As it relates to the issue of taking the news of the thiqa, we take the news of the person who is reliable from amongst us. Today is Laylatul to Sat. He's thiqa, we take that news. It's raining outside. He's thicker, we take that news. A Sheikh Fulan ibn Fulan died. He's thicker, we take that news. We take that number. We take that khab. But when the thicker comes to us and the thicker says to us, Fulan is a fasiq, Fulan is a kadhab, Fulan is a mubtadi, Fulan is a sururi, or this or that, we're going to say to the thicker, because everyone in this masjid, his blood is haram. The one who is the atqa wahifina, the one who has the most taqwa, and the one who is the less from amongst us, their blood is equal in its tahreem. Al Muslimun tatakafa udima'uhum. The Muslims, their blood is equal. We cannot say, your blood is less, we're going to kill you, we're going to sacrifice you. You're the oldest from amongst us, you're close to dying, you're 85, so since you're about to check out, we're going to get rid of you. This one right here is only two months old, he's not mukallif, if he dies now, there's no problem, he goes to Jannah, we're going to get rid of you. Everyone here, his blood is just as important as the most mutaki in this place. So when the thiqa gives some kalam that is a hukum on another Muslim, we're going to say, Hatu burhanakum in kuntum sadiqeen with all of the ihtiram and taqdeer that you deserve because you are thiqa. As for the people who say, I'm thiqa and you have to take my news and my hukum, what do we say, ikhwan? Except Allahu musta'an. There was a time when the issue of Al-Iman became a big issue. It wasn't an issue with the companions. What is a mu'min and what is Iman? That wasn't an issue with them. That became an issue later on. 
when the enemies of Islam came into our religion and they tried to destroy the body of Islam from inside, then all of these issues started to surface. The Murji'ah and the Khawarij and the Mu'tazila and their varying positions. So the issue came up about Al-Iman. If a person can say, I'm a Mu'min, if you say that you are Mu'min, it's like you're making tazkiyah of yourself. Wallahu a'lamu bimen attaqa. La tazakku anfusakum. La tazakku anfusakum. So if you say you're a Mu'min, you're saying what? You're going to Jannah. And then the other people said, well, if you don't say you're a Mu'min, you're a, mu uh, a Kafir. So Ahl sunnah as it is in all of the affairs, they were in the middle. They said that we say, and a mu'min, insha'Allah, insha'Allah, you have to add on that insha'Allah. Now we have people who say, and a thiqa without insha'Allah. It is kalam that is jazm, hatman, ka'annahu unzila min as sama. And a thiqa, you have to take what I have to say. So we have to get both sides of the stories, all three or four or five sides, whatever it takes in order to get the complete picture. If we don't do that, Ikhwan, we are making dhul and we are making oppression. In Surah Sa'ad, Allah tells us about his Nabi Dawood. قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ وَهَلْ أَتَاكَ نَبُؤُ الْخَسْمِ إِذْ تَصَوُّرُ الْمِحْرَابِ إِذْ دَخَلُوا عَلَىٰ دَاوُودَ فَفَزِعَ مِنْهُمْ قَالُوا لَا تَخَافُ خَسْمَانْ بَغَى بَعْضُنَا عَلَىٰ بَعْضُ فَحْكُمْ بَيْنَنَا بِالْحَقُ وَلَا تُشْتِدْ وَهْدِنَا إِلَىٰ سَوَاءِ السِّرَاطِ إِنَّ هَذَا أَخِي لَهُ تِسْعٌ وَتِسْعُونَ لَهُ تِسْعٌ وَتِسْعُونَ نَعْجَةٌ وَلِيَ نَعْجَةٌ وَاحِدَةٌ فَقَالَ أَكْفِلْنِيهَا وَعَزَّنِي فِي الْخِطَابِ قال لقد ظلمك بسؤال نعجت إلى نعاجه وإن كثيرا من الخلطاء ليبقى بعضهم على بعض إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وقليل ما هم. Has the news come to you, people of Dawood, when he was praying in his mihrab, in his special chamber, not this mihrab, but the mihrab is where the Muslim has a special place in his home that is designated for salah. Maryam had a mihrab in her home. Zakaria had a mihrab in her home. And from the sunan al-mahjura, the sunan that had been left, is what we saw our brother Abid doing, opening up the shirt. From the sunan al-mahjura is the Muslim taking a place where he prays his salah in his home. The companions used to have that. Dawood was in his place and the two people came over his private chamber and Dawood became afraid. They said to Dawood, don't be afraid, we are two disputants. One of us has oppressed the other, so judge between us with the haq and guide us to the right sirat, the sirat al mustaqim Guide us to the haq, ya Dawood. So one of them proceeded to talk. He said, this is my brother. He has 99 you, 99 sheep, and I only have one. And he says to me, give me your one, and he overpowers me in speech. After hearing that, Dawood said, verily he has oppressed you by asking you for your one sheep. And verily many of the people, the khulata, when they mix with each other, the people who are mixing with each other, they are oppressive to one another, except those who believe and do righteous deeds, and they are only a few. Allah said, and then Dawood realized that we tried him. And he bowed down in prostration and he sought Allah's forgiveness. And we forgave him for that. This is a tremendous ayah in the Quran for the Qadi. But before we explain that, Ikhwan, there's a very important point I want to remind you of. In this ayah of Dawood, you find a minhaj from the lataif of the Quran. Every time you find in the Quran where a Nabi or Rasul, Salawatullahi wa salam alayhim, every time you find them making a mistake in the Quran, you will find after the mistake has been mentioned in the next ayat or the third ayat or the fourth ayat, immediately you will find them making tawbah to Allah Ta'ala. 
in all of the Quran this is consistent throughout the Quran because the Anbiya and the Rasul Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim they do not procrastinate when it comes to Tawbah Kullu Bani Adam khatta'un wa khayru khatta'een tawabun all of Bani Adam without any exception because al kamalillah wahtahu la sharika lah all of Bani Adam they make mistakes and the best of them who make mistakes are those who make Tawbah Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhim they are in the first of the list they are in the first tabaqa so that's a lesson for us when we do the sin don't make tasweef be like the anbiya make tawbah to Allah azza wa jal immediately like we find in this ayah the point here ikhwan what did Dawood say that was incorrect he told us what was the haq إِنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْخُلَطَالَ يَبْغَ بَعْدِهُمْ عَرَبَعْ Verily those people who mix with each other, they oppress each other. The businessman, the tajir who's a Muslim, he oppresses the mushtari. The mushtari goes into the business of the Muslim and he eats his grapes and he eats his food without letting them know and he's taken from his money. The sister is walking by and we don't lower our gaze so we're oppressing her husband, we're oppressing her, we're oppressing ourselves. We don't give each other the salams. We have evil in our heart towards each other. We have su'adhan towards each other. There was a brother who I had lunch with today. Some kalam is going around about him. When I went into the room, I didn't recognize him because I hadn't seen him since the last time I was in Al Medina. I sat next to him, and everyone will tell you these glasses are for a reason, Abdullah. Allah, I can barely see. I didn't recognize who that brother was, and I, didn't, I said, Salaamu alaikum to everyone, and I sat down. Our Sheikh, our elder, our respected teacher who we love for Allah and in Allah's cause and we see his virtues over us Abu Abdullah Muhammad al Jibat said to that brother Ya Fulan where are you from originally? when he began to speak I looked and I said Fulan ibn Fulan he said nah I'm Fulan ibn Fulan I told him I didn't even know who you were Akhi, and we began to talk I said you know I bet Shaytan had you thinking that I was making hajr of you he said Wallahi I did Akhi this is the nature of the condition of the Muslims, Akhi. Wallahi, I didn't recognize the brother. And had that not happened, and this is where low can be used. Had that not happened, he would have went away, he would have left, departed from me with something in his heart. Shaitan. So verily, many of the people who mix with each other, we oppress each other. Dawood's kalam was the haq. So why did he make istighfar? He made istighfar, ikhwan, because he didn't get the other side of the story. If any one of us heard this story, 99 sheep, and you only have one, and he overpowers you in speech, and he demands that you give him the one sheep, wallah, he's a valim. It may be that they both started off with 100 sheep, and out of negligence, he lost all 100 of his sheep and in addition to that he lost one all 99 he lost 99 and one of his and his brother saying give me your one sheep in compensation for what you lost of mine most people they don't see it like that all they see is oh 99 sheep one sheep he's talking he's the one he's muslim you have to ask the question to find out ikhwan what are the details this is a story for us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Saad, Kitab Allah, the Nabi of Al-Islam, La Tansuha. As we deal with each other, do not forget this issue. After that, we come to probably what I would consider to be one of the most important issues, the issue of judging people based upon al-zahir. Judging people based upon a zahir, what is apparent and what we're seeing from the story of Sulaiman and Dawood. Salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Ikhwan, I'm gonna give you an example that wallahi, I don't know an example in the dunya that is clear as this example in proving this point. 
hadith in Bukhari and Muslim of Usam ibn Zayd radiyallahu anhu. The Muslims were fighting Kufar and there was one warrior from the Kufar who was taking care of business. He was getting down on the battlefield. When he was taking care of business, the Muslims, the companions said, look, tomorrow somebody has to deal with that guy. Someone has to make it his business just to go and deal with that guy. And we're going to get everyone else. Usam ibn Uzay said, who will he? I'll deal with him. I'll take care of him. And another companion. They went to the guy the next day and they overpowered him. One narration said Usama had his sword. Another narration said he had a spear. He overpowered him and he got ready to kill him. And the guy said, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. And Usama killed him. They took the news to the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah became clearly, apparently upset. Ya Usama, aqataltuhu ba'da ma qal la ilaha illallah. Ya Rasulullah, innu qalaha khawfin min as-saif. Ya Usama, aqataltuhu ba'da ma qal la ilaha illallah. Ya Rasulullah, innu qalaha khawfin min as-saif. Ya Usama, أقتلته بعدما قال لا إله إلا الله يا رسول الله إنه قالها خوف من السيف أفلا شققت عن قلبه حتى تعلم أقالها أم لا Did you kill him Usama after he said لا إله إلا الله He only said it because I was about to kill him three times and the Rasul kept saying the same thing Usama said I wish I had been born only at that moment, so I wouldn't re be responsible. Yom al Qiyamah for La ilaha illallah. Ikhwan, why is this clear showing us how we judge with the apparent? Number one, it looks like we have about a thousand people here, 500, I don't know, I wear glasses. Whatever the case is, we have a packed house. Alhamdulillah. 99.9% .9 of us would have killed the man. We're on the battlefield, he's facing us, he's an enemy, he killed some of our brothers already, he's trying to destroy the religion of Islam, he's trying to extinguish the light of Allah Azawajal, he's an enemy and he is an enemy combatant. Had he given, been afforded the opportunity to kill our messenger, he would have happily done so. He's the worst of the creation, because had he tamakkana min Rasulullah, la qatalahu. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Inna ashadda al-nasi adhaabin yawm al-qiyama rajulun qatla nabiyyan aw qatlahu al-nabi. The worst person who get the worst punishment yawm al-qiyama is the man who killed a nabi or a nabi killed him. He's trying to extinguish the light of Islam. And now he says, La ilaha illallah. Wallahi, we're going to make a good job out of doing away with you. It's a clear proof. In addition to that, didn't we say to you, Ikhwan, in the beginning of this dars, loving the companions is from Iman, hating them is kufr, nifaq. Well, that man, the day before, he was killing the companions. The symbol of Al-Islam, the day before, he was giving them a go for their money. And now today, we get the tamkeen from him, and he says, La ilaha illallah, when he sees the glimmer of the safe, Who's going to stop? But when he said what he said, his blood becomes haram. Some of you may think this is just an isolated incident, but it's not wallahi. It happened a number of times, and this lesson comes to us a number of times. The man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Rasulullah, Harra eight. Another time when did you see? Some of the scholars used to not like this. Harra 8. Did you see this? What if this happens? What if that happens? In Ramadan, if the sun rises from the west and sets in the east, how do we do our fast? Scholars used to hate that. If this, if that. But there's a type of what if this happens and what if that happens, that is allowed. The companion said, Ya Rasulullah, Harra 8. 
idha taqaitu bi adwi Allah wa adwi thumma qata'a ihta yadayya thumma haraba min wara' shajaratin aqtulu wa am la qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam la la taqtulu qala ya rasulullah wa qad qata'a ihta yadayya qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam innaka in qataltahu fa anta bi manzilatihi ba'da ma qataltahu wa huwa bi manzilatika qabla an qala ma qala he said if you were to kill him and that was the circumstance he chopped your hand off he ran away and behind the tree he said i shadu an la ilaha illallah and then you got ready to kill him the man said can i kill him rasulullah said you can't kill him he said but rasulullah he chopped my hand off he was trying to kill me chopped my hand off i got to get him back he said you can't kill him if you were to kill him after he said la ilaha illallah then you would be in his place after you killed him and he would be in his place and and he would be in your place and if you were to kill him he's in your place before he said what he said that man is a muslim because he said la ilaha illallah so it is not an isolated incident you have to take what is apparent from the people khalid ibn walid radiyallahu anhu was on an expedition he came to some people and they were muslims but they did not make the hijra to al madina and they remained in the badia with the arabs when khalid came to those people they said to khalid assalamu alaykum khalid was in heaven he killed those people and they said let's do be mu'minin you people are not muslims and they killed them if you were muslims you would have made hijra to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you're not muslims but they said assalamu alaykum he killed them allah revealed the ayah ya ayyuhalladhina amanu idha darabtum fi sabilillah fatabayyan إذا دردتم في في الأرض في سبيل الله فتبينوا ولا تقولوا لمن ألقى إليكم السلام لست مؤمنا تبتغون عرض الحياة الدنيا وعند الله مغانم كثيرة كذلك كنتم من قبل فمن الله عليكم فتبينوا الله رب العالمين أي أيه بليف إذا تجاهدوا في الأرض مكين جهاد مكين تريد إذا تجاهدوا في الأرض and you meet a group of people and they say to you assalam then don't say to them you're not a believer looking for the glitter of this world you're going to take their property you're going to take their horses and their camels for verily with allah is all of the property of the dunya allah said kadhalika kuntum min qabl you people used to be like that before now muslims you need the rahmah of the people the help of the people you used to be like that before and Allah he gave you the blessing so tabayyanu don't act too quickly tabayyanu if the people say salam take it easy i passed by a guy he had a bow tie on his hair was bald where we come from he looked like a nation of islam guy but he said to me just like this assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Usually when they speak it's not very clear. I said to him, Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa maghfiratuh. The brother was with me, he said, he's from the nation. I asked him, do you see him with a paper? <laughs> Did he tell you he's from the nation? Just because he has a bow tie on is not making you from the nation automatically. What delil? I have a delil where he gave salams clearly. Usually those people say salam alaykum. That's a delil they don't really know. This man said assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And we added wa maghfiratuh. The man his name is Khalid Rasmi and he's from Egypt. The brother says he's a Kafir. He's from the Coptics. How do you know that? Uh, he is like that. He's an actor. Ya khi, that's not a delil. He didn't even know the man, but just because his name was Khalid Rasmi, he's a kafir. He may be, he may not be. But we don't make those types of judgments without first finding out clearly. 
And one of the biggest oppressions come ikhwan as it relates to the leaders of the Muslims, the hukam of the Muslims, wherever they may be. The leaders of the Muslims, they say that they are Muslims and they pray. Our brothers who have a lot of Hamas and a lot of ghira for Islam, inshallah, they say, la la la, they're kuffar and he's praying to sunnuan. He's just praying for the camera, for the news tonight. He doesn't really mean that salah. Ya akhi, afala shaqaqta an qalbi? Where did you get that from? The hukam and the mahkumun, they are equal in their blood. Which brings us to the next point about judging. The next point comes from the hadith, from the etiquette of judging. قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يقدينا أحدكم في قضاء بقضائين لا يقدينا أحدكم في قضاء بقضائين Do not let anyone make two judgments for one and the same issue. You have two rulings for the same issue. How can they have two rulings and they are one and the same issue? That has multiple interpretations to it. Multiple interpretations. You come and you get judged and in the judgment the person gives him the ruling. They come back the next day and they say, are you sure? He says, no, no, I want to change it. What are you changing it based upon? Well, it feels good. I gave that yesterday. I give this one today. This way we are sure we're going to be right in one of them. Yeah, what are you doing? That's confusion. That's fold up. You make ijtihad to the best of your ability and you go with what you feel is the haq. That's one meaning. Another meaning, ikhwan, is you give a ruling for Abdullah. Ahmed does the same exact thing and the circumstances are the same from top to bottom, and you give a different ruling. So we find that people do this all the time, again, with the hukam. They do not judge by what Allah revealed, so they're kuffar. But when one of our family members does not judge by what Allah revealed, they are fasiqun. They're not kuffar. The family member, or even one of us, we may be doing the same exact thing that the hakim is doing. That's if we know that the hakim is really doing that. He left salah, he's a kafir. You leave salah, you're not a kafir. Your mother's not a kafir. He shakes hands with a woman, he's a Catholic. You shake hands with women, you're not a Catholic. You can't have two double standards. The hukum has to be mundabat, it has to be consistent across the board. In this general discussion, Ikhwan, it should not be understood that in El Islam, it shouldn't be understood that one hukum remains constant all the time. One hukum at one time can be changed at another time, depending upon the variables that are going on. That's our religion, and that's from the richness and the flexibility of the deen al haq What was haram upon them is not a haram upon them. And this is something that the ulama of al-Islam have dealt with. There's no time to get into that. We don't want someone to think that this point about judging in the same issue with two different situations is not connected to that issue at all. So we have to be consistent, Ikhwan, in our judgments as it relates to the creation. Another very important thing about judging and the etiquette of judging is the Imam of this masjid who I've had the opportunity to meet on this trip really for the first time May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and protect him and help the efforts of the brothers here, the people of Ahlul Hadith, and Al Kamal is Lillahi Ta'ala Wahdullah Sharikala. There are no groups of Muslims in any place where they have completeness. This is not what the reality is. The best of the Muslims have shortcomings. 
That particular Imam here, I'm sure, he knows about the difficulty that you receive when you are made to be an arbitrator between the Muslims, the husband and the wife. Two brothers, two families. When you have to be the arbitrator, you have ignorant people, you have people who follow their desires, you have people who do not respect qala Allah, qala Rasulullah, you have people who have al-i'jab bi anfusihim, you have people who think they're better than you, you have people because of their money or their position, they think that you should, they're, you're, they're doing you a favor for even making you the arbitrator. One of the etiquettes of Al-Islam that have come to us is that we've been taught from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when we judge from the most beneficial etiquettes that can help us to cut through the red tape. The sister and the brother comes. You give a ruling in favor of the brother. The sister says from her hawa, Anta shadeed al nisa that's why you gave that ruling. Because to you, women are mutakhalifat, women are second class citizens, women are like cattle, women are like the furniture. That's why you gave that ruling. She doesn't have any delil, but she hears that you say women should stay in the house. She hears that if the wind is blowing very hard, you don't want your wife outside because even in the niqab and all of that, it shows the contours of her body. So if she heard that, oh, that's woman that you will not let your wife come out or you have a problem with that on a windy day. So she thinks that you're shadid like that. So she says because it's against her, you're shadid against the women. If you give the ruling in favor of the sister, the brother says, you want to marry my wife. <laughs> so in order to cut through all of that kalam, People will not be satisfied until you judge for them. You'll be there all day. Islam showed us an etiquette in Surah An-Nisa. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ شِقَاقَ بَيْنِهِمَا فَبَعَثُوا حَكَمٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهِ وَحَكَمٍ مِّنْ أَهْلِهَا إِنْ يُرِيدَ إِصْلَاحٍ يُوَفِّقِ اللَّهُ بَيْنَهُمَا If you are afraid of a breach of contract between the husband and the wife, then bring a hakam. Bring a qadi, a hakim, bring a hakim from his side and a hakim from her side. If they want islah or if they want islah, you wafiq Allahu baynahuma. Ibn Abbas said, if they want islah, refers to these two people, the hakimain. If the two hakimains want islah, Allah will give them the tawfiq. So from the etiquettes of judging is the hakim comes from his side and the hakim comes from her side. The man chooses the hakim, someone who he likes from his family, integrity, trustworthy, so forth and so on, and she does the same. So they say to the husband and the wife, now look, before we hear your case, before we judge, before we hear one kalima, we want your word that whatever we decide, you two are going to abide by the ruling. That's from the etiquette of judging. You want me to be the ruler in your case, the judge in your case? All right. I don't really like being the judge for all of those other reasons. Menju'ila qadi and bayna nas faqat zubiha bi ghayri sakinin. I don't want to be a judge. But it's fardu I have to. Now I'm a married man. I don't have time for all of this nonsense. Back and forth, back and forth. You guys have to accept what we say in the arbitration. If we decide you're wrong, you have to give them all the money back. You can't hesitate, no no hesitation, you gotta give them money. Whatever we decide. So those people decide, they say, okay. When the ruling comes down the pipe, those people have to submit to what has been said. If they don't submit to what has been said, or one of them, then the ayat in Surah Al-Hujurat, everybody fight against the one who is making buggy. This is applicable now. The hakim here, the hakim here, the husband, we all are opposed to this individual. Or we're with her against him. Or we're with these brothers against them. 
So that's from the etiquette of al Islam that will save you a lot of time. If you are a judge, you should remember that. Tell the people before they start, hey, do you people agree to my ruling? If they chose you and they were satisfied to make you the hakim or the hakim, then they should agree to your ruling. That's from the etiquette of al Islam as it relates to judging. The last thing, Ikhwan, from the many things that can be mentioned is obviously when we judge, we have to judge with the haq. As we mentioned earlier today, إن الله يأمركم أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها وإذا حكمتم فحكم بالعدل. If you judge, judge with an adl. In that hadith, ثلاثة من المنجيات. Three things will save you. One of them, he says, صلى الله عليه وسلم, العدل في الرضا والغضب. From the things that will save you is being fair and just when you're happy and when you're upset. When you're pleased and when you're upset. We have the Suddhij today, Ikhwan, the Muslims today. If you are okay with me, then you can practically do and say whatever you want to say. Allah has fingers, it's okay because you're with me. You can say almost whatever you want to say and make whatever mistake you want to make. But because you're with me, it's okay. I'm pleased with you, so I'm going to say whatever. But then if another person says what is smaller than that, but there is some adawa and shahwa or shahna with that individual and we upset with them, there's no adl. So when we judge in the religion of Al-Islam, we have to judge with an adl. And an adl does not come except from the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the etiquette says, we judge with the kitab of Allah and the sunnah of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's our deen. From the etiquette, we don't judge based upon your culture. Well, in our culture, when we come to this point, this is what we do. We don't judge based upon the one who has the biggest degree or he has the most money. We base our judgments upon the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, of course, Ikhwan, again, a side issue. We know that the urf of the people, the customs of the people, it has an i'tibar in al-Islam. If the people are doing a particular custom, it has consideration in the religion. We shorten our trip when we do a distance that those people consider to be a trip. The urf has an i'tibar. But we're talking about when the urf is mukhalif, is going against the deen, we don't judge by people's culture. We don't judge by democracy. Well, here's a problem we have right here today. Since we're living in the West, since we're living in America, we have to judge with democracy. As I mentioned to you brothers, in the last two weeks, they have given the people in America who do the actions of the people of Lut, they have given them unprecedented rights. Now, now, the child has the right and the school has the right to teach what they call alternate education, where you teach alternate lifestyles in the school system so that your child, if he goes to the public school, can be exposed and introduced to, to lesbians. It used to be that on the books, if a person got caught doing the amaliyah, that he can be brought to trial for sodomy. They took that off now. So now they said, if a Muslim or anybody in the city, if one of those people come to you and they want to rent your house, your apartment, your flat, if you discriminate against them, you're going to jail. If they come to work for you in your business, if you discriminate against them because of what they do, you're going to jail. The Muslim says, well, I'm living in America. This is democracy. I have to practice democracy here. All the while, every day, when one of us goes to them with the lihya, they discriminate against us. And they have no haya about it. But when the 
tables are turned, you'll find the Muslim being sincere, having ikhlas, and executing the way those people think and what they want from us. We can't discriminate. We say la la la. Wallahi, we'll discriminate, but we'll discriminate in a way where we don't get in trouble. The Muslim is a dentist. One of those people come and he has that disease, that tremendous disease that Allah put in those people. If he refuses to treat him, he may get his business taken away from him. So, as the Muslim dentist, I'm going to take a big, big needle and stick it in his gut. <laughs> and I'm going to numb all of the parts of his mouth to get that one too. No, I'm just joking. Because they'll take this kalam and get us all in trouble. It's a conspiracy, everyone in the masjid. We're just joking, Ikhwan. The point is, Ikhwan, we judge by the book of Allah Azza wa Jal and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam according to what the companions understood and what they were upon. And we take the aqwal and the ara of the ulama of al-Islam, the ulama of al-Hadith and fiqh and the usul and fiqh and we get al-istida, we get light and enlightenment from what they say in applying these issues. So we're going to start the Ikhwan right on the dot, right on the button, inshallah. Our brother said, Abu Usama, in this day and age, it is a sad fact that many unlearned people talk ill of some scholars because they differ with the scholars they follow. What should we say to those people or what advice would you give us in this? And we say to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as it relates to the ulama of al-Islam and to know the position of the ulama, the scholars they have ikhtilaf between themselves and the people who really understand the religion, they do not embrace the ikhtilafat of the ulama and they make it a cause or a subject of having hatred, rancor and enmity between the people. That is the advice for the people who really want to save themselves from problems. That's the advice that we give to those individuals. As for these people, unfortunately, we've seen that almost nothing can be said that benefits. There are some people that only the safe and the siyat is going to stop them. Some of the fitna that we have, I'm not saying that we have the safe, there are some people that only the sword is going to work with them. And there are other people who only the whip is going to work for them. The major, major scholars, they have to get involved and they have to say, Uskutu, la tatakallamu. We're going to pass the final verdict. If that doesn't happen, Ikhwan, wallahu alam, the problem is going to be mustamir, it's going to continue. They have to get involved and say to the people, Uskutu, the mutakallimin. And we're not talking about the brothers on our level, our local Muslim brothers, the Suddij. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the Kibar ulama. They say to the next tabaqa of people where all of the kalam is coming from, trinkles down to this tabaqa, and we're running around like the Keystone cops. We say, they say, Usk, la tatakallam. How many bayans have been written, how many advices have been given, and we see that they take your advice, they take your bayan, and then that bayan needs another bayan, and that bayan needs a tabin of a bayan, and that tabin of that bayan, it needs another bayan that is a couple with a tabin, and on and on and on and on. So it's one of those fitness, break your souls off on the mountain of Uhud and save yourself. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika wa ashadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa utubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.